All right, so we just have some errands to do this morning. A little bit of running around. Need to change the oil in our van. The seatbelt doesn't work. And uh, gotta go to the city. A couple things we gotta get there, and then I'm gonna come back, and we'll get back to work on the Tonto. Yeah, I think he's building himself. Huh? All right, so this is the post for the Instagram auction knife, the sliver. I'm gonna put it live right now. Failed. Try it again. Ah, there it is. So if you are interested in this and you're watching this vlog right when it comes out, uh, there's a chance you could still get in on this auction. All right, let's, let's change some oil. My beloved toolbox. Oh, this is my toolbox. This is my, my big box, my main box. Like, look at these snap-on offsets. All the way from three-eighths of an inch to inch and a half. Oh my word, I love this toolbox. Hopefully, when I get my new shop, I'll get this sucker put in here and I'll have all my tools. Like, look at that. A 30-inch crescent wrench. Yeah, it is. Everybody needs one of those. That's not what we're here for. My big snap-on creeper. The old snap-on fat boy creeper. Here's a super quick tip for you. I always write down the tools that I need to change my oil right on this part of the vehicle. Silver Sharpie, oil drain is the 13 millimeter. Oil filter is right in there, 24 millimeter. Also, my oil filter type and my air filter type. That way when I'm buying them at the store, if I forget, I can just check it right here. Every time I change it, I verify they got the right ones and I'm not getting out all these different tools. I've got my tools listed here. There you go. Oh, yes. That's hot, that's hot. Right, now to change the filter on these uh, town and countries, find it easiest if you kind of just loosen this off to get it out of the way. And of course these use these cartridge style filters, which is totally cool. That little o-ring there, stick a little oil on it. Ready to go in. I should have bought one. I should have bought a new air filter. So two times ago when I changed the oil, I forgot to put the drain plug in, even though I've changed the oil like a hundred times before. I start filling it up and then down below I hear all the oil coming right back out. That was useless. Vehicle number two. All right, we've got the wheel changes done. Now we're gonna get back home and hopefully squeeze some time in on that, that Tonto. It's already 4.15, so oh, we're gonna have to push it. All right, back home now, and uh, so maybe you're wondering why I go, like that's my parents' house that I changed the oil at, because um, this is my shop, my, my sea can, and obviously it's not easy to change oil inside of shipping container. I don't wanna do it outside. Uh, so that's kind of why I was there. But here's how the knife came out. All glued up really, really well. And uh, now what we're gonna do is kind of grind these pins down. I'll grind all this stuff. Take this down, get it profiled. And this one actually gets very, very mild profiling. Basically, I kind of just give a light radius on the edges. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set up some type of a, I used to have a dust collection right here on my shop vac and it went and it went to like a central vac. That was a plate that it used to mount on. That's dead. What I should have done is put a dust deputy in line and it wouldn't have killed my shop vac or my central vac. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little hose and see if I can just kind of clamp it to here and uh, put the vacuum right here just to try and keep some of the dust under control. Now I haven't made a knife that has scales probably for uh, three weeks, maybe more. I think the last 16 knives that I've done have not had any handle scales on them. So kind of glad to, to do that again. I'm kind of getting bored with doing just uh, scaleless blades. Most of them are like the Sheep's Foot EDC or the Last Stitch Neckers. And I like making those knives, don't get me wrong, but this is just kind of a nice little change. But I like to keep the dust under control as much as possible. OK, 
Okay, so we'll see how this works. Usually it works pretty good, and I'm actually gonna have to switch up to the GoPro right now because the dust that comes off of this is not something I want on this camera, so. Sorry, but GoPro footage for a little while. I'm going to take all the rest of this hand sanding outside so I don't get all this dust all over the shop. Alright, so we're done giving it a buff. Uh, I found a few little places that I want to readdress, just a couple little spots that uh, I'm just going to go over with a 600 grit cloth, emery cloth again. And uh, then also I've got a few places with some tape residue, you can see right there. So it's a little bit right there, going to have to clean that up, but all in all, it's coming together fairly well. I'm quite happy with it. Let's see if we can catch some light rays. Ooh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, tomorrow probably we'll finish the final cleanup, final finishing of everything, and then it'll be on to making a sheath. I believe this one's getting a Kydex sheath. I'm not entirely sure, but anyways, guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and thank you so much for watching. Cheers.